In this video, we're going to be looking at Activity 225 CAD Design Tools in the IED curriculum. And this is one where we're going to be looking at modeling a water heater tube for uh, as part of the coffee maker design found in the reverse engineering unit. So what we're going to start off with first is I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Um, I do have a folder for the activity already created, and we'll go ahead and call this part Water Heater Tube and we'll say save. And then we'll go ahead and start with a new component and name it the same thing, water heater tube. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So this component is now active and I can start sketching. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the front plane here and I'm going to use the line tool. I'm going to draw a line out and utilizing the dimensions provided, I'm going to start with the longest uh, point on the tube to be 2.31 on the line length. I'm going to hit L on my keyboard to rerun the line command. I'm going to click and then if I actually, if I go back to the original position, hold down my left mouse button, I can actually draw an arc or something that I kind of call arc on a fly and uh, there's where we can create that arc. Uh, I'll come back to the arc dimension here in a second and then the length of this one, this has on the drawing 2.06 but we're going to omit the tapered extrusion so we'll make sure we'll do minus 0.25 and we'll let fusion do the work for us there okay dimension wise we do need to go through and have from here to here this dimension we have is 1.95 and you'll see this kind of happens if that's the case that means we got some unconstrained geometry see how this can go through and move on us so easy way to fix that a horizontal vertical constraint click one end of the arc Click the other end, and now we'll be fully constrained. I'm going to finish the sketch. Here's our profile that we have here as well. To do a sweep to create a tube out of this, we need another profile. So that will be running to this component, and it's going to run up through here. So I'm going to say create sketch. I'm going to choose the um, YZ plane here to go through and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and say center diameter circle right on the origin where that would intersect. This is going to have a diameter of 0.37, and that's going to automatically go through and be dimension. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the sweep option. First thing it's looking for is a profile, so that's the circular shape that we just drew. And we need a path, so I'm going to choose select, and then I'm going to choose the path that it goes through. So it just takes the diameter of the circle and runs along the path until it runs out. And that's kind of how that this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. From here, we can go through and take a look at adding a few other different features to this. One will be the, the tapered extrusion. So first off, before we do that, I'm going to end up going to the construction panel and I'm gonna take a look at creating an axis through a cylinder or a cone or a torus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the face of this cylinder and it's going to automatically put a construction axis right down the middle. And I'm going to say OK. We could also draw one in the sketch as well, but that's kind of what we're working with. I'm going to say Create. I'm going to choose this front plane again. And from here, I'm going to, um, I'm going to press P, the P key, which will start my project option. And I'm going to project this line right here and say OK. So I'm going to get purple lines, so that way I get something to snap to when I go to draw. So I'm going to start, here's an intersection, so I'm going to draw from here along the axis, and I'm going to snap to these corners, and then the projection line, you'll see it fills in because that projection line is going to act as our, as our top piece there. Do a little dimensioning. I'm going to dimension from here to here. This is 0.25, and then as far as the taper angle on this, I'm going to probably set about a 10 degree taper angle just to put something on there to fully constrain the sketch. It's not provided to you in the in the activity, but I think that, you know, that looks pretty appropriate. So I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. And from here, I'm going to use the revolve tool. So revolve, uh, our, our profile's already picked up, one selected automatically, and then we just have to choose the axis, which I can choose the construction axis, and that will provide us with our taper. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. 
Okay, one thing is, is if you don't want the construction axis to set back up in there as well, you can also right click on it, choose show hide, and within the component, you'll also see there's a construction folder. You can also hide that as there as well. So there's a couple places where you can find that geometry. The next thing we need to do is we need to shell this part. And when we shell the part, one of the things they say in the activity is that um, the shell wall thickness is the difference between the outside radius and the inside radius. On the drawing, we have diameters. So the outside diameter is 0.37. Our inside diameter is 0.27. So that would be a difference of 0.1. And then since that would be a diameter, we need to divide by 2. So that means we're going to be at 0.05. So let me run my shell command. I need to choose both ends and my shell thickness to be 0.05. And that will go through and show what our thickness would look like. So if we did 0.1, we can definitely tell that's a real big difference between that and 0.05. And I can go ahead and say OK. To double check, I could always turn this to the right side, use the measure tool, and like here at the bottom, I'll use the bottom one. If I choose this circle, the diameter is 0.27, which matches our drawing. I can choose the outside one, so it shows there's a 0.05 measurement, but in the second selection, the diameter is 0.37. So we know that it matches what we have, and that means we did it correctly, and we're good to go. Okay, the last part will be to add a thread onto, onto the opposite end, which right here actually, the end we were working from. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to find under the Create panel, I'm going to find the Thread option. Thread, I can go through and choose which face that I want to apply the thread to. Now it's going to go the full length, so right now I'm going to uncheck full length. And here if I want to do an offset or I can set a length. So by the drawing we're going to put a half an inch thread on there. And based upon the diameter it automatically picks up what size that we need. 0.375, 3 16 dash 16 UNC 3A as far as the class. So that goes through and looks at it's a coarse, it's an external thread, 16 threads per inch and a diameter of 3 8 It's a right hand direction which is usually what we're working with. The only thing I'm going to show you to do is if you choose modeled, it'll actually cut the threads in there. Otherwise, it just puts a bitmap image of threads on there. I usually like modeled, but it does take some processing power in order to, to render that all the time. But I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And that will go through and finish our water heater tube that would be found in activity 225.